In this video, I'm going to continue the practice questions for grade 12 advanced. And this is the focused questions. And we left off on this page, which is starting to talk now about the structure of the atom. The stuff about the excited states and ground states and all that stuff. Okay, which of the following statement is true about the ground and the excited states? Uh, I need to actually make a video on this one. I just reminded myself. So, the ground state is normally the, the lowest energy level. Anything above that is the excited state. So you have the, the nucleus of an atom, right? And then you have electrons whizzing around it. We use the Bohr model for this. It makes it easier, and it works very well for hydrogen. Not so much for others, but anyway. And so there are different energy levels, okay? So I'm drawing these little levels. What we're doing is labeling the first energy level here as the ground state. And then one, two, three, four, whatever, excited states are above them. I need energy to get from the ground to the excited state. I need an exact amount of energy. Whatever energy that's required to get me here, I need it. If I have a little bit more or a little bit less, the electron will not move. It is very picky. It wants to absorb a photon that comes in and it's going to land on it, and it's going to check the energy of the photon. Maybe I needed 1.3 EV to get here, and it says that, hmm, this packet is giving me 1.2 EV. It says, nah, I'm not going to move. Another photon might come in, and then this one will be exactly 1.3 EV, for example. And it'll say, okay, yes, I'm excited. Let's go to the next level. It jumps up to the next level. This is what's happening, and what we normally do is we zoom in like this, we zoom in. I can take a little section like this. I take a little section and I will now just see straight lines. That makes it easier for us to see. This was the bottom level where he originally started from. A photon came in, 1.3, and it jumped up to the next one. It jumped up to here, for example. So that's just a quick rundown. I will go into more detail later and I'll make a separate video explaining all of that. But now that you have a quick overview of the basics, we know the ground state is the lowest energy. The excited states have higher energies than them. So this is wrong because this says the ground is the highest. Electrons occupy the highest levels. No, because it should be the lowest. Ground state and excited are the same. Of course not. So electrons, I can use my little eraser here. Electrons in an atom can have specific energies. We call those specific energies electron energy levels. There it is. Electron energy levels. Normally, they occupy wherever, where, where? They occupy the ground state. Not the ground state, the lowest state. I messed that up big time. Uh, anyway, they, yes, they want to occupy the lowest level. That lowest level is known as the ground state. I probably should have read the whole statement, shouldn't I have? Anyway, uh, yes, so they want to be as low as possible, and that is called the ground. Anything above that would have been excited, but they can gain energy and move up by absorbing the stuff. What do they absorb? Some sort of energy. And interestingly enough, they... Uh, they had that energy there, but it wasn't actually in the options. They absorb energy from a photon. So what I just explained here is true. It is sitting in the lowest state, which is the ground. It absorbs energy from a photon. It'll move up. And FYI, if it wants to release energy, if it stops being excited, it will come down to the state and it will release a photon. It will emit a photon. When it comes down, he emits. When it goes up, he absorbs. So just remember that. Very nice. Okay. This energy level is shown in this diagram. Which transition will admit the photon with the shortest wavelength? Shortest wavelength means highest energy. How do I know this? Well, energy, there's a few ways to do it. Energy equals HF. Or energy equals H. C divided by lambda. Look at that. I'm dividing by lambda. These two are opposite each other. They're inversely proportional. Not only that, if you remember the wave equation, lambda is C divided by F. That's actually how we got this, uh, how we managed to get this part because of this relationship. I swapped F instead of uh, this. I did what we did here was F is C over lambda. And by doing C over lambda, we can directly stick that into here. That's where this came from, by the way. Uh, you don't need to know that, so let's get rid of that. What, I, what you do need to know is the relationship between them. So, what am I saying? I am saying, this is lambda. I am saying that this is opposite. I need to have the lowest wavelength. If I want the lowest wavelength, I need to have the highest frequency. Highest frequency is the biggest change of energy. 
So let's find the biggest change. I have these different jumps. This is four to one, going from four down to one. That's a big change of energy. That, I like that one, that's huge. So let's continue and let's see two to one. That's very small. That's the least amount of energy. That's the highest wavelength. Um, that's not what I want. The answer I've already done is four to one. Let's look at the other ones. Three to two, three to two. Actually, that's even less than this one. It's a smaller change of energy. And four to three is actually the absolute least energy change. So this is the greatest energy change, the biggest difference. This is the smallest difference and in between. The biggest difference is the biggest energy, biggest frequency, and smallest wavelength. That's exactly what I need to find, shortest wavelength, four to one. I spent longer on that than I really wanted to. Okay, now looking at this, we have this idea here, unknown sample, I need to match. You're just matching the graphs. Which ones are present in the sample? Well, A is not, because there's two lines here. There should have been two lines here, so that's not true. Uh, B, we have a line here. Yes, this line and this line matches. That's very nice. And over here, this line matches too. I like it. B is nice. C, I have this here. That's matching. This is matching. These two also match. I like C. Very good. D, uh, no, these two lines are not present. So it's not that. B and C are both present. So you're just matching the lines in this case. And this one, we have a larger version of the hydrogen emission spectrum. Very nice. Looking at this, this is a wavelength. As you can see, we have the biggest wavelength on the left, smallest wavelength on the right. Highest energy is the smallest wavelength. Highest energy has high frequency. So this side is the highest. So in this case, the highest energy is the Lyman series. Then you have the Balmer, then the bracket, and then the fund, and the Ritz uh, passion as well. So you can just check the graph. If I asked you for the lowest energy, you move all the way to the left to find the highest wavelength, and the lowest energy you can see is right there. So that's what the question is asking for. Now we're going back over to a couple more flux questions, but I think I'm going to pause this video now, and I'll start another one.